What's up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my betting breakdown video for UFC 271. We have Israel Adesanya going against Robert Whitaker too. And we are back for another betting breakdown video. We're going to be breaking down this card from a betting perspective and a betting perspective only. If you do want a further, more in-depth breakdown on why I like which fighter and why I'm betting what, uh, feel free to, to take a look at the full card breakdown and prediction video I posted on Monday. And then I also did a live stream on Friday going for, uh, going into it you know, further in-depth. But yeah, we're going to talk about this these fights from a betting perspective here. And I say we get right into it. The order on my sheet is a little off here. They did switch it around a little bit last second, but we'll go with it. Um, before we get started, if you guys can please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, that'd be much, much appreciated. I'll be going live one hour prior to when the prelims start. The prelims, as of now, start at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. I'll be going live with Uncle Weezy, um, Eric Betts Fights, and Narco Cop for uh, Best Bet, where all four of us give our best bet um, last second, one hour before the card. Check it out um, on the channel. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. But I say we get right into it with the very first fight of the night. Is actually going to be Christian and uh, Knight. We're going to talk about Wells going against Blood Diamond. I do have two bets here, and it's not often you see that the bookies make a mistake like this, but the Bovada opened up the under two and a half rounds um, in this fight at minus 135. I put 1.35 units on it, and I was thinking about it all day. I was like, man, I should really add more to it, and I go to add more, and then they, they take it off. Um, but luckily, FanDuel comes back Wednesday, and they open up the mi under two and a half rounds at minus 142. So I put a unit on that as well. So I'm 2.35 units deep on the under two and a half rounds at some pretty um, crazy prices. If you take a look at the fight, doesn't go to decision. It's like minus 450, which is just nuts. But um, in this fight, you know, if you got on those lines, you know, great job. I knew you're on the ball there. Um, I put it out on Twitter and Instagram. I try to get as much people on that as possible. But um, if you did not have access to that line, I think the under one and a half is still a, a decent way to look. I want to say the under one and a half is around like minus 150. I think this fight ends in the first round, no matter who wins it. I think Jeremiah Wells is an easy path to victory coming out here, uh, taking down Blood Diamond using his black belt and submitting Blood Diamond at some point or ground and pound in that first round. Or, you know, Blood Diamond, I don't know much about, about the guy. He has three MMA fights. I was able to watch two. Um, some people send me some clips of his kickboxing fights, and he has a really good head kick, and he kind of spams it a lot. He's powerful. He's dangerous. And it would not shock me if, if Blood Diamond knocked out Wells with a head kick. But, you know, Wells is very tough. He's very durable. I think Wells um, is in a good spot here to, you know, get the fight down to the mat and finish Blood Diamond shortly after. So uh, 2.35 units total on that under 2.5. Um, but I also like the under 1.5. I like the fight doesn't go as a parley piece. I think there will be violence in this first fight of the night. Moving on. Up, we have Sergey Morozov going against Douglas Silva de Andrade. I've been debating all week if I'm going to bet Morozov. And, you know, I wanted to wait for weigh-ins because I, I wanted to see how Douglas Silva de Andrade looked. He's 36 and a half years old. He's a bantamweight. And my goodness, did he look probably one of the best guys on, on the scale today. Like, this guy is 36 and a half years old, and he was he was jacked. Um, and he always comes in great shape, but he looked very, very good. He looked ready. Um, we are in the bigger cage as well. We are in Texas. So um, I'm kind of iffy about Morozov at that money line because it can be hit. I have seen him hurt. I have seen him knocked out. Again, we are in the big cage. I think he does win by decision. Um, we're in Texas. The judges scare me. So I think I'm just going to lay off. But I'm going to pick Morozov here. I think he's going to mix in the takedown. You know, Douglas Silva de Andrade can slow down at times, and I think Morozov wins a decision. But if Andrade is able to set the takedowns on the feet, he has a ton of power. He could potentially hurt Morozov, but I think more often than not, Morozov wins this fight and wins it by decision. Uh, Morozov by decision is plus 110. I was also looking at the for him to win in either rounds three or decision, which was minus 115 on Fanduel and DraftKings. I don't hate that, but um, I'm going to pass in this fight. But I'm going to pick Morozov. All right. AJ Dobson, Jacob Malkoon, I think this fight goes one of two ways. I think Dobson comes out here and starches Malkoon within the first couple minutes. Or I think Malkoon's able to implement a wrestling-heavy game plan and kind of drag this out and win a decision. I'm more so on the Dobson finishing him. This guy's a monster. He's going to come forward. He's going to throw hard shots. Um, we have seen Malkoon knocked out before uh, by Phil Hawes in the first couple minutes. Uh, I think it was the first minute 
of that fight where Phil Hawes, you know, backed him up right away, landed a couple hard shots, and Malkoon did not look like he wanted to be in there. And at the ceremony of wins, it didn't look like Malkoon really wanted to be there as well. I think, you know, Dobson's going to come forward. He's going to come hard. He's going to look for the finish early. And if Malkoon's not ready, I could see him getting knocked out. Um, there was a, def- a bunch of different ways I was debating on betting this fight. I think you could look at, you know, Dobson round one. I think you could look at Dobson by KO. I think you could look at Dobson by KO in round one. Um, what I did, though, was on DraftKings Sportsbook, they have the the fight or the fighter to win in rounds one or rounds two, and they put Dobson to win in rounds one or rounds two at plus 180, so I put 0.4 units on that. I think Dobson, more often than not, does win in that first round, uh, but I do like getting that extra round there. And then on top of that, you know, I do think Dobson does win by knockout, but he does have some submissions on his record, including a submission went on the contender series. So I like that rounds one and rounds two. I know a lot of people are on the under. Um, I don't hate the under because I think Dobson starches him, but um, I could see a scenario where Jacob Alcoon's able to take down Dobson, grind him out, and eventually win a decision, but I think Dobson gets him out of there early. Carlos Olberg going against Fabio Charant. Um, if you guys know me, you know I'm trying to stay from the parlays this year. This is my first parlay all year, and it's been working out, not doing parlays, but you know I got suckered into a parlay this week but i do like it um i have z- i have zero or i have 1.75 units on this parlay it's minus 175 the over one and a half in the main event out of sign whitaker parlayed with olberg charant fight doesn't go to decision um i really wanted to play fight doesn't go this week i really wanted to play the under two and a half i really wanted to play the fight won't start three on this fight but you know the bookies were all over it they're they're all over it this fight's going to finish more often than not you know, I think on the feet, Sharon's in, in, in very big trouble. Very big trouble. I mean, getting knocked out by William Knight, getting outstruck like 44 to 7, and knocked out against uh, Alexa Kamor. Um, you know, I think he is in deep, deep trouble on the feet. Um, Sharon, you know, he has a submission game, but he doesn't go for takedowns. If he could come in here, get the fight down to the mat, maybe he could submit Olberg, but I think Olberg starts him here. I think um, he wins in the first round. I don't hate Olberg inside the distance, minus 155. Um, I don't hate Olberg by KO minus 150 um and i don't hate the under one and a half i don't hate the under two and a half i don't hate the fight doesn't go but i did ultimately parlay the fight doesn't go with the over one and a half in the main event all right hanato moikana going against alexander hernandez i do have a bet here as well i have a quarter unit on hernandez to win by knockout plus 270 on fandle um i think on fandle now you can or on DraftKings you can get it at plus 275 but um, I think Hernandez's path to victories by knockout here. I don't expect him to win minutes. You know, he's losing minutes on the feet against a guy like Tiago Moises. I really like the strike in Moicano. Um, he throws a ton of volume. He has a ton of tools on the feet. If this fight hits the mat, I can see him winning minutes there as well. But um, on the feet, Hernandez is going to have opportunities to knock out who I think is a chinny Moicano who's been, you know, finishing all four of his losses, who's been knocked out three times, who's been hurt a lot. And Hernandez hits very hard. Hernandez has three knockouts in the UFC, all three of them coming in the first round. And it would not shock me if Hernandez came in here and starched Moicano, and that's kind of what I'm predicting here. So, yeah, I like Hernandez to win. Um, I, I didn't bet it straight because I don't see him winning a decision. I think if he wins, it is by knockout. A knockout, like I said, plus 275 on DK. Um, I don't mind the first round knockout for Hernandez because, again, when he is winning, it's by knockout. Um, it, when he is winning by knockout, it is in the first round. So I don't hate that as well. I think that round it's like around like plus 500. But ultimately, I do have a quarter unit on that knockout prop for Hernandez. I get why Moicano's favored, but I'm fading his chin here. Ronnie Lawrence, Mono Martinez, Ronnie Lawrence, big favorite, minus 300. I, I like both these guys a lot. I think it's a tough match for Mana. Uh, there's not a ton of information in terms of the takedown defense and get-up game of Mana. But when he has taken down, I have seen he's comfortable like kind of you know, play jiu-jitsu off his back. He's a purple belt in BJJ. I've seen him you know get reversal sweeps, end up on top, but... I don't think it's going to work against Ronnie Lawrence here. Uh, Ronnie Lawrence, this guy's a beast. This guy's a very good wrestler. Um, 20 takedowns. 20 takedowns in his very first two fights, contender series in UFC. Like, this guy's nuts, and he has the pace, the cardio to back it up. I think Ronnie Lawrence grinds Mana Martinez here, wins a decision. Uh, Ronnie Lawrence, plus 105. If you do like Mana, I'd recommend looking at that knockout prop at plus 500. This guy's dangerous. If Ronnie Lawrence wants to test his striking here, uh, Mana's live. Mana's very live. He's very long, very rangy. hits like a truck. And when he does win, it is early. So I think Ronnie Lawrence wins unless he dist- decides for some reason to strike with Mono Martinez, which I would not get. But Ronnie Lawrence should get this done and probably decision. Um, decision plus 105, maybe the, the third round slash decision could be something to look at. But I'm not betting this fight. I think Ronnie Lawrence wins, though. William Knight, Maxim Grishin. William Knight missed weight by like 12 pounds. This is now a heavyweight fight before the weight miss. I liked Grishin. 
after the weight miss. I liked Christian, but I'll be honest, I'll keep it short and sweet. I'm not betting this fight. Um, I'm not a big fan of either fighter, especially William Knight. I don't think William Knight is that skilled of a mixed martial artist. He's huge. He's jacked. He hits hard, but that's about it. His takedown defense is awful. His striking defense is awful. At least with Maxim Grishin, he actually has some solid skills. Like, he is a good striker. Um, I've seen him take guys down. I've seen him submit guys. He's well-rounded. He's fought good competition. Um, so, for that reason, i got to go with Grishin. But, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not betting this fight. Nothing sticks out. No props. Who knows what's going to happen. But I will take I will take the more skilled mixed martial artist in Grishin. But if Knight knocked him out, I, it wouldn't shock me. All right, the People's Made event, the fight that I see being talked out the, uh, talked about the most this week for some reason. It's Casey O'Neill, Roxanne Modafferi. I do have two bets here. So Bovada opened up the un, or, Obata, uh, Bovada had can't talk. Bovada had the over two and a half rounds minus 155. I hopped on that for one unit. Um, my reason being is because you know I think there's a ton, so much recency bias on that line. Like Casey O'Neill comes out, she knocks out and submits three bums in a row. Shanna Dobson not in the UFC. And Tanina Shevchenko, non-existent ground game. And then Laura Procopio, who randomly gassed out due to, you know, God knows what. Um, and then, you know, Roxanne Modafferi, what you can say about her, you know, she's not the most skilled fighter, but what she is, she's very tough. Um, she's not been knocked out since, like, 2010. She's only been knocked out once. It was, like, a slam knockout. Um, she hasn't been submitted since, like, what, 2008, 2009. It's been a long time. And she's and she's fought a lot better fighters than Casey O'Neill, like a Tyler Santos. Like I think Tyler Santos would smoke O'Neill in a couple minutes. Um, like a Viviana Ruja. Like she's fought some really good fighters. Um, a Lauren Murphy, you know. Um, and she hasn't been finished in a long, long time. So with that said, O'Neill, it would not shock me if she finished Roxy. If she does, I think it's going to be late in the fight. Again, Roxy's very tough. She's not a bum, kinda. She's not. She knows what she's doing. She's defensively sound. She's not going to give up. Um, so I think the most likely scenario is Casey O'Neill by decision, but I did see a prop that did stick out. It was O'Neill by KO at plus 400. So I put a quarter unit on the O'Neill KO plus 400. Um, it would not shock me if she did that thing where she's like just punching Roxanne Modafferi on the mat. Um, nothing's landing, but she's looking up at the ref. The ref starts to feel bad for Roxy, and he just stops it for no reason. It would not shock me if like something like that happened. Um, but like I said, most likely scenario, I think Casey O'Neill wins by decision, but that's minus 110. I don't really like that. That O'Neill KO prop, though, that's interesting. Plus 400, quarter unit, best case scenario for me. Um, Casey O'Neill ends it with a, a knockout late in the fight after those uh, two and a half rounds. Um, next best case scenario, the fight goes over the two and a half rounds, which I think is the most likely. Um, and then worst case scenario is like a like a rock semi ferry early finish or, or, or an O'Neill sub, which I don't really think any of those are that likely of happening. But I'll pick O'Neill to win pretty confidently. Um... But I would not lay the minus 415, I'll tell you that. Andre Arlovsky, Jared Vandera. Uh, I was very tempted initially on the over 2.5, and, and the fight goes to decision, but it's just very terrifying to lay minus 200 on an over 2.5 and, and heavyweight fight. I know Arlovsky is a decisionator, uh, win or loss for the most part. Uh, Vandera, he is a finisher, 83% finish rate, but Arlovsky is 42 years old, almost 43. Um, he's been knocked out 11 times, submitted twice. It would not... You know, it would not shock me if Vandera came out here, potentially knocked out Arlovsky. It would not shock me. Like, Arlovsky's getting up there in age. But I think um, this fight does go over. I think it's very greasy. It's a fight I want nothing to do with. I'll pick Arlovsky to win a very greasy, greasy decision. But I, I really don't want to bet this fight. Uh, Arlovsky, by decision, earlier in the week was plus 150. Like, even that um, just did not tempt me enough. So I'm going to stay away. Um, good luck to everybody that's betting this fight because I feel like it's going to be very very greasy and and, and uh I have, I have no clue what's going to happen so give me Arlovsky to win by a very greasy decision but I do not want to put money on that fight all right we'll get to the main card now uh Bobby Green hack pressed I have 1.6 units on the fight goes to decision minus 160 courtesy of Fandel and uh Fandel right after I bet that like an hour later they moved the fight doesn't or the fight goes to like minus 152 I was like come on um which which shocked me and it, it's kind of shocking that um, I thought this line would get smashed all week. Um, there's a ton of recency bias on this fight goes to decision. Bobby Green goes out there, gets his first finish in like like seven or eight years. Like it's been a long time um, against a realtor in uh, Ally Aquinta, who's probably not going to fight ever again in the UFC. He looked done from the jump. Um, again, Bobby Green's not a finisher at all. Uh, and he doesn't get finished. He only got knocked out once in the UFC, I believe, and that was by Dustin Poirier. 
Um, so yeah, he typically wins by decision. He typically loses by decision. And that's why we saw the decision prop last fight against Ally Quint. It was like something crazy. Like it was like minus 300 fight goes to decision minus 350, something nuts. The over two and a half was like minus 400. The over one and a half was like minus eight. It was nuts. And now all of a sudden we're getting the fight goes to decision at minus 160 because Bobby Reed knocked out, um, a realtor. So um, I, I took advantage of that. Um, don't know why the line had not moved more, but you could still get it at around like minus 170, minus 180, um, which I, I still think there's some solid value there. Like if there's a finish, it's probably a hack brass knockout. I think the finishing ability is probably from the hack brass side. But again, like one guy's knocked out Bobby Green in like the last 10 years, and it was Dustin Poirier. Um, hack brass does not, not Dustin Poirier. So yeah, I, I like Green here to win. And I like green here to win um, probably by decision. Uh, I'm not going to touch the green money line, but green by decision on Fando is like plus 190. I think if you like green, I would probably take a look at that green decision on Fando. But I'm fine with the uh, with the, the 1.6 unit bet on the fight goes to decision. All right. We will keep moving on, and we have... Kyler Phillips, Marcelo Rojo, and yeah, I, I like the under. I like the fight doesn't go. It's just a little bit too chalky for my liking, um, but I definitely get why it's a very popular play. I would have liked to get <laughs> get the under 2.5 at like minus 140 where it opened. I missed out on that, and now it's like minus 170, minus 180, so I'm not going to touch that, but I do have a small bet, um, 0.4 units on Phillips to win in either rounds 1 or rounds 2. I think if he does finish, typically his finishes are coming early when he's fresh. You know, both guys have cardio issues here, so if it does hit the third round, I'm not sure who's going to really have the advantage because we've seen Rojo multiple times slow down in that third round, and we've seen Kyler Phillips multiple times slow in the third round. I think if it does end, I think it's going to end pretty quick here. Um, yeah, Phillips, 0.4 units to win in rounds one or rounds two, plus 110. He's a minus 430 favorite. I don't hate that look. Um, Phillips, even inside the distance, minus 140, covers that third round as well. Um, Phillips by sub, I know is a very popular play, plus 450. I think he should go out there and try to submit him, but um, Phillips does not really try to do that. Um, he's a black belt in BJJ, great grappler, but uh, only one submission in his career was by calf slicer a while ago. Um, so I think Phillips wins. Um, what I parlay him, probably not, uh, but I think he does win inside the distance within the first couple rounds there. Uh, so yeah, that's the bet. Not going heavy on it, but I think violence is a good spot here. Just a little chalky. Jared Cannonier, Derek Brunson. This is my only straight bet of the week. I have uh, Jared Cannonier, 1.5 units, minus 150. Um, you know, Derek Brunson's been off on a phenomenal run. Um, a lot of people are on Brunson this week because he keeps winning as a dog. I think that stops here. Uh, Brunson, even in the fights he's winning, like he's like he's like getting hurt. He's getting stunned, wobbled in some of these fights against Kevin Holland. Holland hurt him. Darren Till hurt him bad in their fight as well. And you know, Kevin Holland, no takedown defense, non-existent get-up game. It did not make Brunson work at all. Um, you know, Darren Till did not look prepared for that fight. There's rumors that he was injured, and, um, you know, Edmund Shabazzian has about about a round of gas, and <laughs> Elias Theodore, like, th this is his win. Like, I'm not, if he beats Cannonier, like, that's going to be a huge win, like, very respectable win. Cannonier has very good takedown defense, middleweight, 85% takedown defense, and not only does he have a good takedown defense, unlike uh, a Kevin Holland or Shabazzian, he has a very good get-up game. It is very hard to hold down. Jared Cannonier, and I think on the feet, you know, Brunson's going to be in big trouble. I do not like how Brunson looks when he gets hit, and the judges probably aren't going to like how Brunson looks when he gets hit, and it's just hard to see Brunson coming out here, you know, wrestling Cannonier for 15 minutes. Could he do it? Potentially. Potentially, but I think at some point Cannonier is going to, you know, knock out Brunson. On top of that, Brunson came out and said that he's retiring in like two fights, which it's not something you really want to hear if you're on the Brunson side, but you know, I like Cannoneer. I waited it out, got minus 150. Um, don't know if that price will get any better, but give me Cannoneer here for the win, probably by knockout. Uh, knockout plus 115. I, I don't hate that, but I did take him straight. Derek Lewis tied to Ivasa. We'll keep this one short. You know, I'm a, I'm a violence guy. I love the violence, but minus 550. I just can't do anything with that. Um, I, I'm not betting violence in this fight. Maybe as a parlay piece. And it's going to be a fight where they stand and bang until one man falls. Like, even the fight starts or a fight doesn't start round two. It's not even plus money. I'm going to stay away. I like both guys. I like Derek Lewis a lot. I like Tai Tuivasa. Um, they're going to stand in the middle and bang until one man falls. And I think that, that that fight favors a guy like Lewis. But it's a heavyweight fight. Both guys hit hard. 
Both guys can knock each other out. Both guys can get knocked out. Really, who who knows who's going to win? Who, if somebody tells you they're confident in this fight, you know they're, they're probably crazy because it's hard to be confident in a fight like this. Either guy's live. Um, I'll take Derek Lewis. I think Ty Tuivasa is going to try to brawl with Lewis, and that's just not how you beat Lewis. You don't you do not brawl with Lewis. You know how you beat Lewis is a is a gone game plan. JDS, uh, you know Daniel Cormier. When he's losing, he's losing to guys like that. Like you're, Ty Tuivasa is not going to wrestle Derek Lewis. Ty Tuivasa is not going to stick to the outside like a gun and pick apart Derek Lewis. Um, he's going to rush in and try to knock him out, and I think that favors Lewis. So i um, not confident in it. How could you be? But I will take Derek Lewis. No bet on the main event or a co-main event. Main event, um, Adesanya, Whitaker. I do have two bets here. The, it's going to end the parlay with the olberg Charant fight doesn't go. And the over one and a half rounds, minus 175, that is 1.75 units. And then I also have a half unit on the, the knockout prop for Adesanya on FanDuel Sportsbook. I got it at plus 190. They actually bumped it up to uh, plus 195. And yeah, I think Adesanya knocks out Whitaker here. Um, there's a lot of love for Whitaker that I see in terms of like on Twitter and you know all that on, on the comments. But um, the betting line just keeps getting wider and wider for Adesanya. Um, I just, I, I really don't like this matchup for Whitaker. He's going to come in here. Um, he's going to come in with a new game plan potentially. That game plan is going to be potentially getting Adesanya down. If he does do that, uh, I just don't see him having success. He's only had one fight where he's landed over two takedowns in his entire career, which is not something Rob Whitaker does. And on top of that, Adesanya's takedown defense is very good. His get-up game is very good. I think on the feet, Whitaker's kind of screwed. Like Whitaker's, Whitaker's a, a phenomenal striker, but seven-inch reach is advantage against somebody like Adesanya in the big cage. Um, I think Whitaker's in big trouble here. I think he gets knocked out at some point in this fight. But I think it goes over one and a half. I think it probably goes over two and a half. I think Adesanya wins later in the fight, maybe the third, fourth, or fifth round. Um, but yeah, I, I really like Adesanya here. If I was doing a parlay um, in terms of you know parlaying up a couple fighters, you know Adesanya would be probably in that parlay as well. So those are the, the bets. Those are what I'm looking at. I'm not going to most likely add anything on, but my straight bet, Jared Cannonier, 1.5 units minus 150. I have 2.35 units total on Blood Diamond and Jeremiah Wells under 2.5. I have one unit on Casey O'Neill over 2.5 um, rounds minus 155. On top of that, a quarter unit on the Casey O'Neill KO prop plus 400. A quarter unit on the Hernandez KO prop plus 270. Uh, Bobby Green hack brass, 1.6 units minus 160 fight goes the distance. Adesanya KO, half a unit plus 190. The parlay, Adesanya, Whitaker over 1.5 with uh, the fight doesn't go in the Olberg Charant fight, minus 175, 1.75 units. And other than that, Kyler Phillips to win in rounds one or rounds two, 0.4 units plus 110. Dobson to win in rounds one or rounds two, uh, 0.4 units plus 180. 11 bets on the line, 10 units on the line. And uh, on a nice winning streak. Hopefully, you know, keep it going here. I'm not in love with this card. If you're a parlayer, if you're somebody that likes parlays, this is your dream card. Lots of chalky favorites that probably win. Lots of chalky props that probably cash. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to stay away from the parlays. But I do have one for this card, and hopefully it does hit. Uh, follow me on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers. Instagram, DFS by the numbers. I'll be posting my final picks with the method of victory on both of those. Um, if you have any questions, comment below. Hit me up on social media. I'm pretty good at getting back to people. Um, definitely a longer betting breakdown video, but we got a lot to talk about, 14 fights. Um, but, yeah, that's about it. Best of luck. Let's make some money. And I do want to say one more thank you for everybody that signed up for DFSbythenumbers.com. Um, was at 97 uh, people signed up earlier in the week. We smashed that 100 mark. So do appreciate all of you for signing up. Um, if you have not signed up yet, feel free to check it out. Lots of great stuff on DFSbythenumbers.com. And, uh, yeah, we have, uh, I think, like a seven-week stretch of fight cards. So lots, lots of fights um, to watch, lots of money to make, and hopefully make some money at UFC 271. That's about it, guys. Best of luck, and we'll talk to you very soon.